Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. I am out here amongst the red rocks and we are gonna go rock crawling with my RC four wheel drive truck. I'm gonna give you guys a quick story though. So when I picked up the Marlin, uh, I was just really excited to get an RC four wheel drive. It turned out that it actually looked a lot like my brother's truck. I'll throw up a picture right here. And what's kind of funny about this is I put my brother's YouTube channel, Austin's Off-Road Garage. I had put that logo on my RC and then my brother put a full size sticker that matched like the scale of what it was on my RC on his truck. So shout out to Austin for that. That was really cool, man. And then he went off and bought new wheels and tires. So I was looking at getting a replacement wheels and tires to make my RC look just like his truck again. And uh, unfortunately I decided that like the pricing of trying to mimic my brother's truck wasn't quite worth it because the truck was the wrong year. The Marlin is an 81, my brother's was an 85, 86, something like that. Um, so it wasn't the right body style and dumping another 150 bucks into what is ultimately the wrong truck didn't sound all that fun to me. So I made a trade for my Marlin body for an RC four wheel drive forerunner body. So I'm actually driving it around right behind me. And then I'm gonna show you guys a picture of my old forerunner which I had alongside my brother's truck. Ultimately, I ended up selling that, but uh, I did put some upgrades on it, lift, wheels, tires, locker, light bar, all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, it was a really fun little rig. So I decided I'm going to clone my old 4Runner. And here we are out on the rocks with my RC four-wheel drive 4Runner body. And you can see here, I painted this one bright red. My original Forerunner was a Viper Red, like Dodge Viper Red, from what the previous owner had told me. Now, obviously, the wheels and tires on this truck specifically are the wrong wheels and tires compared to what mine were. So I'm going to go out and try and find something more similar. I know that RC Four Wheel Drive makes the Duratrac tires, and uh, we're going to get a little bit smaller tire on this thing. Start going tiny tire trucking. So. Pretty fun little story there, but we're gonna get back to wheeling now. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, let's check out the clone of my RC four wheel drive 4Runner. So this 4Runner body was actually used by a couple people before I ended up with it. And when I picked it up, it was a dark metallic gray. One of my buddies had it and uh, I had the Marlin body. I asked him if he might be interested in a trade. He said, sure, uh, this thing is pretty cool because it's got the full interior in there. And what I did with this truck before uh, I started making this video is I actually painted the whole thing to match my old 4Runner. And if you can see in there, I've actually got the correct color interior as well. I went with a uh, dark brown interior because that's what my old truck had. And I've even got like the bed in the rear of the truck all matte brown as well. So that all matches up. We can take a peek in here. I uh, got my blue cooler in there. That's an affiliate link down below if you guys want to check that out. But uh, these 4Runners are just super detailed. They're basically a model that you can drive around is ultimately what they are. The doors and the tailgate open, the hood opens, although under my hood uh, I don't have an engine in there because there's no damn room for it. It's got my ESC and my brushless motor up front. Uh, my ESC is mounted on top of my servo right now because there's just no room under these with the full interiors. So be aware of that if you guys wanna do a build on this. Uh, your electronics room is quite limited, so you've been warned. The rear bumper on this is quite close to what I had on my 4Runner. I had a trail gear bumper on mine. Um, unfortunately, my 4Runner was independent front suspension, but if I'm building an RC version of it, ultimately I wanted a solid front axle, so. That's what I gave myself on the little version. I'm not gonna IFS swap my RC four wheel drive. So here we go, cruising up this hill. The big difference between the Marlin and this Forerunner body is the Forerunner is so much heavier. So it wheels quite a bit different here. Uh, surprisingly, it doesn't really add that much articulation to the suspension. I would have thought that uh, a little more weight would help those springs flex. Maybe my new rear springs haven't broken in yet. Um, I did warp them really bad from running too few of leafs at one point, and then the brushless motor just kind of bent them. There we go, that was a good, solid climb right there. But overall, guys, I really just like having the 4Runner more. 
Uh, my brother's truck was super fun, but like I say, it wasn't the right truck. The Marlin's definitely badass. I love 1981 Toyota pickups, but uh, you know, I kind of miss my old 4Runner and a small part of it is back for me. And I can wheel this one way harder than I ever did my original. So speaking of that, uh, in some of the videos of my old Marlin, like I mentioned, I try and take care of the Marlin, just not trying to go out there and beat the heck out of it. But with the fresh paint on this thing, this is gonna be too steep. Uh, with the fresh paint on this, I'm definitely going to try and avoid rolling it over as much as possible. But I still wanna make these videos entertaining for you guys. So we're gonna push the limits on what it's capable, but you know, this is probably not going to be my slot canyon line killer like my Capra is. And I'm still learning the limits of this truck. And it definitely likes to tip over pretty easy just because the body weight is so much heavier than the Marlin. So what's cool about my buddy who traded me for the Marlin for the 4Runner is he got more performance. His truck can now perform better, way less weight up top. There's a reason you don't see the 4Runner bodies out on the scale guys competing. That's because they're so dang heavy. Maybe if you got rid of the interior, and a few bits here and there would work better, but uh, overall just significantly heavier body. So I'll give you guys some more details on my real 4Runner. Uh, it had a 22 RE in it. Uh, when I first picked it up, it had like 289,000 miles. I drove it into the 300K club. Uh, I actually took it off-road quite a bit. It was a fun little truck. I did a full engine rebuild, sent the head over to California and did a 22 RE performance built head, um, custom cut uh, camshaft, uh, three angle valve cut job, chrome ollie springs, all this fancy stuff, uh, board a uh, set of piston, or board the block out for different pistons and rings. I actually took a uh, 22 RE out of an 83 Celica that my buddy was working on and uh, had a donor engine to build while my 4Runner was still driving. So that was super nice. I kind of built it like at my own pace. Um, I'm trying not to flip over here. Woo, that was nice and light. Uh, so I took his 4Runner, I took his 22RE out of his Celica and built that while my 4Runner was still driving on the street because it was my daily driver. It was the only thing I had to drive at the time. I think I was like 19 when I owned it. Um, and then got that fully rebuilt. Yep, try not to end up on a roof here. Suspension wise on my old 4Runner, the rear springs, I had Old Man Emu springs on the rear. They were plus twos. And then in the front, I did a ball joint spacer lift, which wasn't terrible, it worked. I put an Aussie locker in the rear of it. So it was a lunchbox style locker and uh, it would click around if you weren't putting torque through your rear diff. And then when you got on the throttle, it would lock right up. So a locked 4Runner like that does pretty well on just like mild trails, nothing too crazy. I didn't have the gearing or dual cases like my brother had, so his was a lot better crawler than mine was, that's for sure. So shortly after I had put a new engine in it, um, I did a clutch at the same time, just cause that's the time to do a clutch is when you pull your engine. Um, we went out wheeling with a bunch of friends and camping for a weekend. And I ended up on an obstacle where I accidentally put my 4Runner on its side. So that was no fun. Uh, they got a little bit of a show. I was not happy about it. Mostly it was just my pride that hurt, but uh, the truck ended up all right. The trail gear rear bumper basically took most of the hit and it was a pretty mellow tip, uh, nothing too wild. We were able to just kind of push it back up onto its wheels. It was like a little V-notch type obstacle that was fairly steep and it had a hole on the back right. And so what had happened is I was wheeling it and feathering my clutch trying to make it up it and it just wasn't going and I didn't want to ruin my new clutch. So I ended up pushing in my clutch and rolling backwards. And uh, when I did that, the back right tire fell in the hole and it tipped over on its side. Ooh, just about tipped this one. You guys can see here just the weight of this thing bouncing around. They don't bounce very well as far as like bumping up obstacles. Oh, ouch. Let's be honest, we could all see that coming, right? 
So take a peek right here. The hood does have a magnet on it and you can pull it out and open it up. Kind of cool. But uh, like I say, there's no engine or anything in there. There's nothing to really see. It's just an ESC, a motor and a servo. So let's see if we can't find a way around this little obstacle here. Well, on the topic of my own vehicles, uh, what ultimately happened to the 4Runner is I got a different job where I had a longer commute, needed something a little bit nicer to drive. Uh, mine did not have AC or anything like that, and uh, it gets a little warm in the summers where I'm at. So ended up trading it out, uh, sold it to a friend of mine, and then I bought a 2001 double cab Tacoma, four-wheel drive. Uh, all the double cabs are autos, so just in case you guys didn't know that. Um, so I did not get a manual double cab. Uh, once I got that one, it was actually TRD supercharged with the 3.4 in it. So had a little bit of get up and go to it. It was a fun truck. And then I modified the uh, TRD locker in it so that I could engage it whenever I wanted. So I didn't lose the lock capability of my truck, which is kind of nice. The e-locker is super fun because I could put it in and two wheel drive high and I could do stupid burnouts and donuts and whatever in the rain. Uh, the trucks kind of get after it, those little Tacomas do, so. Certainly a huge power difference between a 22 RE and a 3.4 supercharged, so. It was exactly what I needed, just something a little bit nicer to drive. So if you guys can't tell from the stories here, I'm definitely a, a Toyota guy. I have owned a Jeep before, but it was because it was a big like buggy crawler and there wasn't a whole lot of Jeep left on it. It had a uh, Chevy 14 bolt rear. Dana 60 front and then a Ford V8 in it. So not a whole lot of Jeep in that old CJ, but it was a fun crawler for sure. So there you guys go. That is the story of why I swapped out the Marlin body for this 4Runner body. I hope you enjoyed the stories. Um, the 4Runner was a fun little truck, which is why I wanted to build a small clone of it. Like I say, just kind of have a small piece of it back. It was super awesome. Great little trucks. If you guys have the opportunity to pick up a first gen 4Runner or a uh, second gen Toyota pickup, I highly suggest it. They make great little shit boxes and you can go out there and hammer on them. They are awesome little trucks. Till next time guys, I greatly appreciate you watching. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your first off-road vehicle was and uh, we'll be sure to see you guys in the next one.